Globally, over the past century, fish populations have faced overharvesting and mismanagement. California is no exception. Fisheries are facing a challenge. There's no other way to put it. The collapse of the salmon industry in Northern California, it's the collapse of the sardine fishery in Central California, you know, the loss of Cannery Row, the old Italian and Portuguese fisheries, which are virtually non-existent today. It's partly driven by climate change. It's partly driven by over-harvest in the past and management mistakes. But we've learned a lot of lessons. In the heyday, in the 70s and the 80s, there was a lot of pressure on the fisheries because it was wide open. And what I mean when I say wide open, you could go and catch as much as you wanted. Throughout the 80s, here in Morro Bay in Port San Luis, which is our county, landings were in excess of 14 to 15 million pounds. But due to overcapitalization in the fishery and overfishing, landings started to plummet. In 2000, the fishery was considered an economic disaster. As a result of the increasing pressure on our fisheries, new technology and management strategies are being applied in California to address underlying incentive problems in fisheries and to align better with the biological characteristics of the fish stocks. California's fishery management is a pretty complex scheme. We have open access, limited entry programs. We have catch shares. We have effort controls through trap limits. We have federal fisheries like salmon, which are regulated through time area management. And then we have fisheries like crab managed at the state level. To manage the health of the stock, it depends on the fish. Like crab, I think managing it on a size-based limit is a sustainable way of managing it, you know. Um, with the ground fish fishery, we catch such a variety of fish that you couldn't do it on size base because the nets will catch whatever's in front of them. So they set quota limits, a sustainable number that's allowed to be harvested out of the ocean, and I think that is the correct way of, of managing the ground fishery. In 2011, they enacted the Cat Shares program and rationalized the fishery. And since that time, uh, five species have come off the overfished species list. And by 2019, there should, if everything goes well, there should only be one species left um, on that list of overfished species. The status of different fish stocks in California is also highly varied. The salmon stock is worse than it's ever been before, with lasting drought and water mismanagement inland having a devastating effect on salmon stocks throughout their range in California. On the other hand, in the crab fishery, some of the highest abundance we've ever seen. In the ground fish sector, stocks are rebounding after collapses about 10 or 20 years ago. Right now I've, I've fished for Dungeness crab, salmon, and uh, the IF, in the IFQ system, the ground fish. I fish primarily for salmon, crab. Those are my money makers. And I fish for sable fish uh, to kind of fill in the gaps. I take breaks from that, from uh, the ground fish to go crabbing because there's more money in crabbing and there's no shortage of markets for crab, you know. It's kind of a derby style fishery to where you, they say go, you set the pots in the water and you, you try to catch as many as you can as fast as you can because the guy next to you is gonna try to catch them. So it's kind of like first come, first serve basis out on the water for the Dungeness crab fishery. I think the crabbing's managed really well because the guys are fishing to the very end of the season to where there's not any harvestable crab left and the next year they seem plentiful. And with the IFQ, or with the ground fish, I think they're in amazing health right now because there's very few of us catching those fish. With new management regulations and better understanding of fish stocks, the fishing industry has become more economically efficient. These gains in economic efficiency often raise additional concerns about the equity of these regulations, as well as the impact they have on fishing communities. If you could scrape together 20,000 bucks and you were willing to work hard, you could enter the, the commercial fishing fleet. It used to be that if you got in, you could buy a little Monterey with a salmon permit. You could go salmon fishing. There was a lot more salmon. 
and a lot less almond trees back then. It's a half a million dollars to, to really come in from the outside of the industry and, and, and be a newcomer. To, to have an operation that will provide you enough income to live in California. Access is just challenging because the fishery is complex and, and, and it's expensive to participate in. The fishery has been set up to prevent consolidation because there's control rules and limits on how much quarter share you can own. I see a catch share system working really well for younger generations in the fact that you can't buy enough quota or a permit for a reasonable price. So being able to lease a permit and being able to lease quota at a good rate will attract other fish, you know, younger fishermen or just fishermen in general into the IFQ. The fishery is 100% monitored and it's one of the biggest hurdles we face with trying to get fishermen to participate to fish in this fishery. I think the most important thing to successful fishery management in the future is to include uh, include the fishermen in the process. You know, there's an inclination for fishermen to want to catch as many fish as they can, and, they, and, and so you might see fishermen turning a blind eye to, you know, stock depletion and, and, and the things that we should be concerned about. But the fishermen understand a lot about fisheries that the management people don't. Although we have made considerable progress in fisheries management strategies, there are new pressures to address, which may require more adaptive management strategies. These new pressures arise because fisheries are inherently complex systems and require integrated management strategies at the nexus of the environment and human decision-making. Generally, fishermen are facing challenges in the environmental side of things and the human side of things. And what I mean by the natural side is environmental fluctuations, climate change, harmful algal blooms, and unpredictable events that impact both resource abundance and public health issues. We have fewer and fewer fishermen competing for less and less opportunity in fewer and fewer ports because of the degradation of our port infrastructure, the consolidation of buyers. The future challenges that I see or that I'm having right now in the ground fish fishery is the infrastructure isn't there to, to process the fish. You know, it's, it's hard to find people that will, that can actually process your fish. Salmon require water, fresh water, to have healthy runs. And so in California and Oregon and Washington, big issues are water management. Because if we don't have clean rivers, clean waterways, and healthy oceans, then the industry can't survive. We believe that an owner-operator approach to these fisheries is the most sustainable solution and the best way to keep as many people on the water, bringing as much product to the dock as possible. The major challenge for California fisheries is fairness, in allocation and ensuring that the system that we design as we rebuild stocks, as we harvest abundant stocks like crab, halibut, ground fish, is one that ensures access. We want fishermen to fish forever. We want to be able to sell local sustainable seafood to California consumers. I want California seafood lovers to be able to go down to the dock and buy fish from someone they know. It all comes down to making the right policy decisions, and we can do it. Many decisions we make involve trade-offs, and fisheries management is no exception. While we can promote efficient use of marine resources by reducing overcapitalization and adopting economically efficient management strategies, these decisions impact fish populations, the access of fishermen to these resources, and local fishing communities. It is important that we consider all of these factors as we move forward toward a goal of sustainably managing our marine resources.